Hold on, hold on. Wait, this way. Oh yeah. Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan Tramty here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number four and today we have a question. What is even noise? We've been talking about noise this whole time and we know there are different types. There's brown and pink and white. Why is brown noise the best noise? According to me at least. Uh, hopefully we'll solve this mystery, this tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a transverse waveform, which is going to show sort of sample by sample what makes up noise and the different types. And then we are going to actually plot the spectrum of the noise on a canvas. So it's going to display, it's going to be a visual thing that we make to display the noise. It looks like this. And with that, we're going to get a better understanding of what's going on and what these different noise types are and what is noise. All right, let's get to it. All right, I currently have Audacity fired up. It is a sample editor that everybody should have because it is free and it is pretty awesome. So I'm going to generate a second of noise. So I have white noise, uh, full amplitude and one second worth. Okay, now we have a blue block of something. I want you to imagine this blue block as many, 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 many points on a two-dimensional graph. We have a y-axis over here that goes from negative one to positive one, and the width is essentially time, okay? Um, and here's the thing. It's just one second of time, so there's a lot going on in just one second. In fact, because our sample rate is 44,100 hertz, there are exactly... 44,100 dots in this graph. In fact, uh, if we zoom in, you can kind of see it uh, a little more closely. So how do we make sense of this? Well, <laughs> I mean, it is really hard to make sense of. That is one of the uh, sort of features of noise, but uh, we could look at moments like right here. I don't know. It's not a great example, but we have what is essentially an oscillation taking place, right? We have zigzagging, a triangle wave, right? It goes up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then down. That means that at this moment, when we press play, which we're not going to, there is a frequency represented in this noise. That frequency is a very high frequency. In fact, it's the highest frequency that you can represent in 44,100 hertz. It is in exactly the frequency 22,050 because it takes two samples to get from one peak to the next peak. So we do, of course, have a term for the highest represented frequency in a signal, and that is called the Nyquist frequency. But uh, here's the thing. We can't we can't really hear this. It's so high. It's well above most of our hearing ranges, unless you are a baby, in which case, congratulations on understanding this tutorial. You're very advanced. Anyways, um, that's just one case of one frequency. In fact, if you look around, you'll see all different kinds of frequencies. Like there seems to be something, some sort of pattern taking place right here, a peak here, a peak here, and peak here. It's like separated by, I don't know, six or seven samples, whatever frequency that is, that frequency will be represented in the sound and you'll hear it as a tone, uh, still a pretty high tone, uh, but nevertheless, a, t a very fleeting moment of a tone in the noise. So no matter where you look, you could say that there is some energy in at least some frequencies. And because of this, if your window is large enough, you could say that all frequencies are kind of statistically represented in a block of sound like this. And this is merely a byproduct of a random number generator. If you don't believe me, I am looking at the P5 noise generator source right now and what gets 
filled in the white noise buffer is literally a random number, right? We have a random number between zero and one that gets multiplied by two, so it's a random number between zero and two. And then we have an offset to balance it around zero so that it's a random number between negative one and one, and that is how you generate noise, or at least that's how P5 generates white noise. Very quickly, I'm going to generate one second of pink noise just to show that it is not a big block of blue like the white noise. In fact, it is much curvier. So in, if we look very closely, we can see that, of course, oscillations do take place at the Nyquist frequency, but when they do, they are significantly attenuated in favor for uh, oscillations that are taking place on the lower frequencies. There is something about the algorithm that is attenuating higher frequencies and boosting the lower frequencies. And with brown noise, that is the case as well, but to an even more extreme degree. It is still random. It's completely random in the sense that there are no patterns. But if you look closely, you will see that from sample to sample, it can only move just a tiny bit on the y-axis, if that makes sense. So it takes a long time for it to travel from one extreme to the next. You can't just have, you know, one sample be way down here, right? It's, it moves by very tiny increments, and that is why there is a lot of energy in the low end and not much energy in the high end. Again, if you're interested, I highly recommend you check out the source on GitHub you'll see that the pink noise uses what's essentially an interesting filtering method by Paul Kellett, and then brown noise uses Brownian motion. All right, I have more to say about noise, especially pink noise, but I wanna keep this video short and I wanna do a lot of coding of the spectrum and I'll leave that for the next video. And then we'll come back to a few of the unanswered questions about noise. I'll see you then later.